is efficiency. Uh, if we can do more with less, we should. And uh, I'm starting that today by reducing the bureaucracy of the Senate uh, by decreasing the number of standing committees that we have. Uh, today I'm announcing a reduction of Senate standing and subcommittees by nearly 20%. Uh, this will allow our chamber and our senators to be more efficient and more deliberate in the legislative process. Uh, and I believe the change will give our members more stability in their committee participation. Um, I know that this was an issue for a number of people, and, uh, and I met with my friends uh, on the other side of the aisle, and, uh, and I believe that uh, by shrinking the number of standing committees to 13, uh, we will um, be able to better participate in hearings and uh, have people there instead of maybe having two or three different hearings going on at the same time. Uh, this will also help us fulfill another commitment that we made last week by agreeing to expand televised coverage of our committees. Uh, we are currently working with the Ohio Channel to identify up to three additional committees, along with the Finance Committee, to provide both digital and broadcast coverage. Uh, we also have the ability to provide audio-only coverage as well. Uh, this plan will need to be approved by the State House Programming Committee, so all four legislative leaders will ultimately need to sign off, but I look forward to uh, moving ahead on this new initiative in the coming weeks. As for the committee chairmanships and member assignments, we'll be making those assignments today. Uh, we have non-voting scheduled just a few hours from now, and uh, you'll be able to pick up that information this afternoon. Now, you've heard us talk for the last several years about the importance of helping each Ohioan secure the opportunity to obtain his or her God-given potential. Although this is a new General Assembly with new leadership and new faces on the team, our focus remains on creating an environment in this state that opens those opportunities up to every Ohioan. With that in mind, we've decided to establish some governing principles that will shape our policy agenda in the weeks ahead. This is a budget year, so many of our key priorities will end up in, the, in that bill later this spring. Because of that, we decided not to get too consumed with announcing a specific you know, top 10 priority list or, or something like that. Uh, but we will be introducing bills today. I, I do have the top 10 uh, bills ahead of us uh, and can discuss those. Uh, as we introduce our initial bills, all of them will fit into one of the themes that I'm about to discuss. Every bill being introduced is important, and uh, instead of getting fixated on those top 10, I think we should focus on the underlying issues. So as a caucus, we've decided to let the following priorities shape our policy agenda. First, this caucus is focused on enabling job creation. We've said many times in the past that government doesn't create jobs, but we are here to help job creators by improving Ohio's economic climate. The work that we've done in the last five or six years has helped significantly, uh, allowing the state to add 430,000 new private sector jobs to our economy, and it's given us one of the most improved business climates in the nation. But we have to do more to stay competitive and to build on the progress that we've already made. So we will grow the economy. And this issue ties in with job creation and tax relief. Economic growth is essential to our progress as a state. This includes everything from eliminating unnecessary regulations to ensuring reliable and affordable energy sources for our citizens and our employers. Our next priority is strengthening our schools. And this budget will be challenging, but it's a priority for our caucus to sustain our investments in primary and secondary education. And beyond school funding, one of our initial bills will come from Senators Gardner and Terfar to help school districts qualify for technology and security funding. Our next priority is lowering the tax burden, which ties in with what I said about the economy. We need to stay competitive with surrounding states, and frankly, to continue to find ways to let Ohioans keep more of what they earn. We also need to have relief for working families, and that's why one of our initial bills will be to renew the sales tax holiday that has been so successful for families across Ohio in recent years. One of our other priorities is going to be fighting drugs, and in particular, the heroin and opioid epidemic. This is one of the greatest epidemics of our time, and Ohio is one of the hardest hit states in the country. We'll continue to work with, uh, with the House, with the governor's administration, with our colleagues in the Senate across the aisle, and with our families, school administrators, law enforcement, and treatment and recovery experts to find solutions that keep Ohioans from getting addicted and help those who have become addicted get the support and treatment they need to get back on the path to a healthy, productive, and addiction-free life. 
One of our initial bills will come from Senator LaRose, and it will increase penalties significantly for trafficking in fentanyl. Uh, for those of you who uh, aren't familiar with it, fentanyl is 30 to 50 times more powerful than heroin. Uh, it's extremely dangerous and is linked to hundreds of overdose deaths throughout Ohio and is commonly mixed with heroin and often used by people who aren't even aware that that's what they're consuming. Finding and prosecuting these traffickers is essential to combating the drug crisis across our state. And this is about increasing punishments for traffickers. But we're also going to focus on ensuring treatment for addicts so that if they're caught in the cycle of addiction, they can be put on the pathway to recovery. Fundamentally, this caucus is focused on protecting Ohioans. And Senator Coonsy and Olslager will build off of some of the progress that we've made in recent years by introducing a bill to help victims of human trafficking rebuild their lives. And this bill is about redemption and recovery. All too often, people who are enslaved in the abusive and cruel world of human trafficking are forced to engage in a life of crime. And once they escape, they have difficulty finding safe housing or jobs because of those convictions. This bill will establish a process for victims to apply to a court to have his or her criminal record cleared of crimes resulting from forced prostitution so that the victim can have a better opportunity to find a home, find a job, and rebuild their life. This legislation complements a series of bills passed over the last several years aimed at eradicating human trafficking through better enforcement, increased penalties, and, uh, and through offering hope to human trafficking victims through other civil justice reforms. Another bill along this line that we'll introduce will come from Senator Fagan and Manning to eliminate a loophole that currently allows those who knowingly <coughs> violate protection orders to circumvent criminal charges because of formalities related to the service of process. And this bill stems from a case right here in Columbus where a man terrorized and assaulted a woman even though she had a protection order. Strengthening this law will give an additional measure of hope and protection to every victim of domestic violence in our state. Our caucus is also focused on streamlining government. A lot of this will happen in the budget process, particularly uh, as it relates to the process that uh, potentially would have been set up by Senate Bill 329 from the last General Assembly. You'll recall that that bill, which was sponsored by Senators Jordan and former Senate President Faber, uh, called for legislative review of all state agencies and when the governor vetoed it, he pointed to the budget process as a better process for taking this up. Well, we'll, we'll take him up on that challenge, uh, both in the budget and in other ways. I've committed to former Senate President Faber that the bill he plans to renew for consideration in the House will also have <coughs> priority in the Senate. It will be uh, reintroduced by Senator Jordan, and Senator Jordan will be chairing a finance subcommittee that focuses not just on this budget, but also on overall state agency review moving forward. Our caucus is focused on training our workforce, and we'll be working on creating stronger pathways for Ohioans to connect and train for job opportunities, not just for today, but for tomorrow. Senators Beagle and Balderson will be introducing a bill to strengthen Ohio's workforce development efforts. This bill will encourage better collaboration between ODE, the Department of Higher Ed, and Ohio's major business organizations to develop professional development programs that address how to build authentic, real-world, and project-based learning into the curriculum. And it will also enhance career services at the county level and expand STEM and STEAM options in all grades, K through 12, among other initiatives as it relates to equipping our workforce. And we are focused on investing in infrastructure. There is no question how important our infrastructure is to Ohio's role in the global economy. A strong infrastructure supports economic development, job creation, and quality of life for all our families. We have over 26,000 bridges, second in the nation after Texas. And Senator Hoagland will be introducing a bill this week to codify Ohio's Bridge Partnership Program, a cooperative effort between ODOT and local municipalities to help repair structurally deficient bridges in our state um, using uh, state and federal funds to help local governments. The condition of our roads, bridges, and waterways is something we hear about daily from our constituents, and we know how important these repairs are to their daily lives, as well as the, to the long-term viability of our communities and, and businesses. We are also focused, finally, on making college affordable. Our caucus wants to guarantee access to quality education, but also guarantee access to an affordable education, and that's one of our top priorities. Families spend years saving to pay for college, and Senators Honinger and Eklund will make that a little bit easier 
by introducing a bill to increase the maximum income tax deduction for college savings from $2,000 to $10,000 per child. This legislation will also increase the maximum tax deduction for those participating in the ABLE program to $10,000. <clears> the ABLE program was legislation that we just passed in the last General Assembly to allow Ohio families of children with disabilities to save for expenses associated with caring for a loved one. With these priorities, we continue to build on the accomplishments of the last several years and incorporate many ideas of our constituents that are brought directly to us by them. We will begin bill introductions this morning. Many of the things you heard me discuss are ready to go today, and some we're still working on. But as we did in the last General Assembly, when 90% of the bills that passed were bipartisan, I look forward to working with Senator Schiavone and all of his caucus members as well on these ideas. I believe the depth of experience that our members bring to this body and the deliberative nature of the Senate will allow us to accomplish meaningful work <coughs> for making our state a place of opportunity for all of Iowa. Uh, with that, uh, 